Is this Vermont or heaven? It's Vlogmas year 11. Good morning, happy Vlogmas day 14. I just realized that we're more than halfway through Vlogmas and we also were yesterday, but I just didn't even say it, I totally forgot. So, sorry loves, but we are, which is crazy. It always happens so fast. But this morning I had my little baby pouch, a little strawberry and banana one. It was delicious. And now I'm editing with some granola. You know, the 411 I told y'all about the other day. And Finley got our snow tires for us this morning, which is very exciting. And they look very good, very sleek and chic. Hey guys, coming to you from editing on this video, but I just wanted to kind of preface this next clip because it's going to be kind of a construction fin cam clip. And I have provided updates on the bedroom renovation pretty much just for Patreon as of right now, because I was just kind of keeping it on the hush for a little bit because it's been just like a big project with a lot of updates and all those updates, like I provided, you know, a full written thing of like what we've done so far and like photos of the progress and every step-by-step -step of it on Patreon. But um, I haven't really like shown many vlog clips of the process and Finley's work that he's doing in that space. But this next clip is going to be that. And I just figured like, might as well show you because it's like one of the bigger projects that we're working on right now. And also because a lot of yesterday I was just editing and Finley was like, can I take your camera and show them the updates on the bedroom? And I was like, honestly, that would be lovely to like have a little bedroom update in this Vlogmas episode, even if in my head I'm like, oh, I was gonna keep it a secret and then do this like a whole, you know, bedroom renovation video. And I'm still gonna do that when we're actually done with the bedroom, but I think it's just nice to provide you a little update. So you're gonna see that next. Okay. Oh, uh, well, howdy there. Just a little lost, you know, training thought there. Thinking about like, kind of like Game of Thrones, you know what I mean? You're reading your book and then it, it just ends, but the story is not over and like, you know that more exists and more will happen, but you will never know. That's how I feel about life. It is so inconvenient to die. And I really do hope that there is maybe some sort of afterlife where I can at least passively perceive because I'm very curious to see what happens. Uh, so today I will be working on this partition wall, closet wall here. I'm working with some challenges. Uh, this is called an old construction when you're building it into an already pre-existing place like this. And things tend to be a lot more difficult because nothing ever stays exactly where you put it. How's to settle, things change. So not working in an ideal environment in here. Um, so instead of framing the wall on the ground and then tilting it up like generally one would do when stick framing a wall, I'm building it in in place piece by piece um, and I'll show you the first steps I've taken there I've never done that before so interesting challenge for me and there's a few other framing challenges uh, like arches that I've never dealt with so I'll have an arch at the top of the entryway to the closet and then I'll have an arch around the window on uh, the wall over here so both of those are different framing techniques than I've ever used um, one really amazing, I actually forgot to tell Meg this, so she'll hear it now. So when you're framing a wall, typically you would put the framing members like 16 inch on center apart from each other. And that just kind of creates a consistent framework of how people do things. There's advanced framing, which does 24 inch gaps on center, Where, however the fuck you say it. But that's a little different. Anyways, this ended up working literally perfectly where I have a 36 inch door, you know, rough opening cut out. Oh my God, just dead on, 16 inches center, 16 inches center, and I could space it out perfectly. It was unbelievable. I understand this house was probably built on 16 inch on center, but like it wasn't built with nominal lumber. My mind, yeah, I don't know what the odds are of it working out this perfectly, but it feels kismet, as Barbie would say. All right, I'll pop this thing off. So I made this little plumb bob. It's a little screwdriver on a string. You can use things like that to basically find level and calculate how far off of level you are so you can account for the fact, which you can't really, uh, at least I'm not aware of how to do that without something like a plumb bob or at least some kind of bubble level or something like that. Um, Cause if you just measure out from the wall in two places, you'll just create a parallelogram. That's my rough opening, my doorway. These are screwed in, these are pre-cut. So this wall, it'll go up here. Then I'll have like kind of a half circle up to there. 
So that'll allow the light to come to both sides. Another big challenge with this room, and this has been a challenge with the drywall too, is the beam and, you know, the shape that it makes and trying to carve out around there. You know, there's a little triangle right here that I need to account for. So I'm having a hard time knowing. I can know that this bottom line is good and I can know that this chalk line is good, but that chalk line, you know, ends at those nails. And I'm still trying to figure out how to make sure those nails line up correctly with down there. So I don't have like some weird like offness in my wall where it meets there. That weird shaping is another reason I, I didn't feel confident at all in lifting up the framing. To level this out, I'm just gonna put a piece of half inch drywall along the top plate of the framing just to give it a flat surface. As you can see, I started with the ground. I feel like it might've made more sense to start with the top, but because of the weird ceiling shape, I didn't wanna start with something that difficult. So starting with the bottom, then I'll do the walls as I've pre-cut. Once I do the walls, I'll work up to the ceiling. Oh God, oh God. A lot to think about. But yeah, trying to, trying to do all four walls and then kind of fill in from there. Roughly speaking, that's gonna be my approach. So yeah, I'll try to film some of it, try not to overdo it, uh, but that's what's up. So I took this pre-cut piece, put it up against the wall, put the level up against it. Once I got the top of where it would meet this section when it was perfectly level, I marked that. Then I attached this string to this outside nail and then ran that to that outside mark and then marked where it met this beam corner and then I put a nail in where it met that beam corner and then dropped my plumb bob to see where it met my floor plate or whatever. That allows me to see everything's lining up. Where I wanted this to end was right on the edge of that which is pretty much right where it is. Like I don't know about other people, I don't know like exactly what's right, what you're allowed to do, but if it's off by an eighth inch or something, I don't give a shit. Another thing I'm thinking is that if I was gonna pre-frame the wall and tilt it up, I would just do all the drywall while it's on the ground. At least like, I mean, not like screw it in, but like cut it to size, I think, because it would just be easier to work with, at least for like a small wall like this. Alas, I won't be able to. Wow, mother freaking finally. I finished my vlog from yesterday and it's not even up yet. I just finished editing it and it's like halfway through its exporting process. But I seriously edited this video from 10 a.m. to 3.30. And I don't know how the freak it took me like five and a half hours because it was like over two hours of footage, but I don't know. It just took so long. That's gonna be up soon finally for you guys, but also, I've just been chilling in my little crew neck at this desk for hours. So I had Finley take the camera up to show you what he's been doing on the bedroom. So at least a lot of this vlog isn't just this, you know? And I also just wrote an email to this woman, Nancy, who's having a wreath making workshop tonight that I was planning to go to. And I RSVP'd, she's had them for last week and this week. And so I RSVP'd to the last one and she replied back and was like, hey, this class is actually full. Like, if you could um, send a check for this amount here, then you can come to the one next week. And I was like, okay. So then I sent it and that was like over a week ago, you know, and it hasn't been cashed yet. So I emailed her just to confirm that like she got it and that I'm okay to go to the wreath making workshop tonight. Cause it's in like a couple of hours, you know? So that's my plan for later. And I already do have a wreath on my front door that my mom sent me from a Vermont farm, which is very cute. And then I also have a fake wreath over here in, on this wall in this room. So it's not like, oh my God, I need a wreath. I have to go to this class, but I just thought it would be like fun. And I went to a wreath making workshop last year with my friend Katie, my old wedding planner, and we just had a great time. So I wanted to do it again and also possibly meet some people, you know, in my community. So that was my vibe for tonight. So hope it works out. It's okay if it doesn't but that is the prospect on the horizon. And while I wait for this video to export, should we read a story together? Because my mom sent me all of my favorite Christmas books, and I think it might be a good time to read either Truffles Christmas or Olive the Other Reindeer. I think I read Olive to Tika last year, so I'm gonna read Truffles because it's pretty nostalgic for me. Okay, get your hot cocoa and let's cozy up in bed. I'll meet you there. Unfortunately, Larry is a little bit too preoccupied to come over here. He's sitting in front of the pellet stove, just warming himself. Larry, are you sure you don't want to read the book? Rue's here. 
cuddled up under the covers. She's excited about the book, even though she's not going to look at any of the pages. You said you, you're just comfortable where you are and you can hear it from over there? Okay. Rue, the baby, and Larry are going to listen to Truffles Christmas with you guys by Anna Curry. I have a ginormous kink in my neck today. Like, on the- ow! Oh, on the left! <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Like, why did I need to prove it to you? So I'm gonna limit my moving of my head, but let's read this book. I'll show you all the illustrations, don't worry. Written and illustrated by Anna Curry. Go off, queen. Christmas was coming. All the little mice had finished their letters to Santa. All, that is, except for Truffle. He couldn't decide what he wanted. I'd really love a hula hoop, but I wish we had a blanket, a nice new blanket without any holes. But there again, you'll have to decide, said Emmeline, his big sister, who always knew best. Or Santa won't bring you anything. Here, you better start again. Oh, all right, a hula hoop then, said Truffle, throwing away his letter. He put his new letter into an envelope and addressed it to Santa Claus North Pole. I remember this book from when I was younger, and it is so cute. On Christmas Eve, the mice hung their stockings up in a neat row. I'm getting a nurse's uniform, announced Emmeline. I'm getting a chemistry set, said George, Truffle's big brother. The littlest mice squeaked excitedly. They wanted teddy bears. Then all of the mice went to bed. Mother Mouse put their blanket over them and tucked them in. So cozy and cute. It wasn't a very big blanket, and it didn't quite cover them all. Emmeline got most of the blanket because she was the oldest. Then George, then Truffle. But the littlest mice were right on the edge. They lay shivering in the cold. <laughs> so Truffle gave them his part of the blanket, but then he got cold. Bother, said Truffle as he stared out into the darkness. I wish I'd asked for a blanket and not a hula hoop. Bother, I know, he said, <laughs> suddenly sitting bolt upright. I'll wait for Santa and tell him I've changed my mind. Truffle crept out of bed and tiptoed to the mouse hole door. There he waited and waited, but Santa didn't come and didn't come. It's no use here, grumbled Truffle. I'll go outside where I can see farther. I'd better take something to eat in case I get hungry. Oh my God, this is the part I remember so, so vividly of him packing up his little sack. He packed an apple core, a bread crust, and half a peanut, and he went off into the night, dragging his picnic behind him. Oh, this is beautiful, this page. It was very cold. As he waited for Santa, Truffle became hungry, so he unpacked his picnic. First he ate his bread crust, very slowly. Then he ate his apple core, very, very slowly. Larry's looking at me, he loves this part. And finally he ate his peanut half, very, very slowly. But still Santa did not come. Truffle stood up and brushed his whiskers. I will go to that hill over there where I can fly to see Santa and Santa can see me, he said firmly and plodded off. In the woods, a fox barked and an owl hooted. A tabby cat picked up her ears. Truffle was scared, but he trudged on and on. The clouds covered the moon. The candle in Truffle's lantern went out. It was very dark. Beautiful page again. Truffle felt all alone and very tired. He sat down and tried to watch for Santa, but his eyes kept shutting. Softly it started to snow. Truffle fell asleep. Now, said the fox, before the snow covers him entirely. Now, said the owl, before the greedy fox gets him. Now, said the tabby cat, because I'm very, very hungry. Yikes. Then, just before the fox jumped and the owl swooped and the tabby cat pounced, there was a tinkling and jingling of sleigh bells. There was a rattling and creaking of harnesses. There was a pattering and shuffling of hooves, but Truffle was fast asleep and didn't notice a thing until a reindeer snorted in his face. Eek, squeaked Truffle. What's this, said Santa. A mouse, a poor little mouse. How cold you are, Truffle shivered. Why aren't you tucked up in bed, asked Santa. I came out to find you, mumbled Truffle, still half asleep and rather muddled. I wanted a hula hoop, but we really need a blanket. Oh, hi, Larry. Thanks for joining us. Hmm, said Santa. I think it's time I took you home. He tucked Truffle into his pocket, and away they went. Over the fox, the owl, and the tabby cat. Over the forest and hills. Over the fields and hedges. 
and they didn't touch the ground until they reached Truffle's home. Truffle was asleep again, so fast asleep that he didn't even stir when Santa fished him out of his pocket and returned him to the mouse hole. Santa's hand brushed against a little piece of crumpled paper lying on the ground. He unfolded it carefully. Dear Santa, it said in tiny mouse letters, I would like a hula hoop blanket, hula hoop blanket. Aha, said Santa. I see. Emmeline was the first to wake up on Christmas morning. She squealed loudly and woke up George, Truffle, and the littlest mice. They all squealed too, for not only were they lying under the reddest, warmest, coziest blanket that had ever been, they were lying on the most beautiful bed for mice in the world. Oh my god. Cute. And Emmeline had her nurse's uniform. George had his chemistry set. The littlest mice had their tiny teddy bears. And Truffle had his hula hoop. He smiled happily, and on his whiskers there still clung a little bit of red fluff from the bottom of Santa's pocket. The end. That was a good book. There he is, my little buddy. Truffle's Christmas. It was just as magical as I remembered it, and I think the baby really liked it. And I think the dogs liked it too, because they both totally fell asleep during story time. <laughs> Hope you guys liked it too. It's time to use the stove top for the first time. I'm very excited. I'm not making anything crazy. I'm just thinking about, you know, eating something bigger before I go to the wreath making workshop. I never heard back from that woman, by the way, on like if she ever got my check for it. So I hope that it's all good if I just drive out there. I'm making these tonight. I don't know. I saw them at the store. I said, hell, okay, I'll buy them. Plant-based crab cakes, six plant protein blend, pea protein, soy protein, chickpea flour, faba, lentil, soy, navy powder. It's just a bunch of beans <laughs> to taste like crab. I do eat fish, but I just saw them and I was like, 20 grams per serving? That's crazy. Let's try this bad boy out. Nice. I honestly thought that these were like a frozen thing that I could just make in the air fryer, but it says cook from frozen in a preheated skillet over medium heat and add oil. I'm only making four of these. It comes in a pack of eight and I just don't want that many. Place frozen cakes on skillet. Do not overcrowd. For food safety, cook cakes with the lid on, flipping occasionally until the internal temperature reaches 165 for approximately eight to nine minutes. And I'll let you know if they're good, but in the meantime, I'm gonna prepare my salad. So, you know, like my endocrinologist said, just make it a big old plate of greens, spinach and arugula. And I'm actually out of Meredith Dairy sheep and goat cheese. I love this stuff so much, I talk about it all the time. But the marinade is normally what I use because it's like little tiny bits of cheese at the bottom down there and peppercorns and like herbs and olive oil. So, well, instead of doing this with a fork, I'm gonna do it with a spoon, just like this much, two spoons. And I'll cut up these and toss them around. I'm also gonna add in a handful of almonds just for funsies. Yeah, why not? I also wanna say this is like getting pretty smoky and we don't have a range hood, not even one that like sucks it all into the oven because then, you know, where does it go? <laughs> it has to go somewhere. But I think I've said this before, behind this oven is an exterior wall. And that being said, we do want to put a range hood under the cabinet right here that we'll just push to outside. And we're asking for one for Christmas. These bad boys are done. They got a little crispy up in there, but I cooked them for the right amount of time. I just think I had it up too high to start. So they got a little smoky. Let's dry it. They're good. They're not as fishy as a crab cake, obviously, because crab is pretty fishy, but lots of protein, lots of beans up in there. Delicious, 20 grams of that big pea. All right, folks, for my wreath making that I hope they don't turn me away from, <laughs> Finley was like, I feel like it would be weird if they were like, sorry, you should just go home, just head back home. <laughs> but I mean, if she has limited materials, this woman, Nancy running it, then who knows, but this is my outfit. I am probably gonna change into boots or sneakers instead of my house shoes. I'm trying to just wear my Uggs in the house, like my little slippers. Hey, it's a nice outfit of the day. Do you like this? I actually do like that. I was watching you earlier when you had your other hat on and I thought that it was nice. Well, when you didn't have the Crocs on, you had your little cuffed pants. <laughs> and then I love this hoodie always, mainly because of the back. Okay, since you're black, I'm gonna 
eyebrows. Mine too, it's fine. I'm wearing my red pants again from Parade because even though I wore these yesterday, I wear different long johns under them every day so it feels like I'm actually not wearing these pants, really, you know? And then I'm wearing my thrifted little mistletoe festive turtleneck, which I haven't worn this season yet. And then this may come off once I'm there, I don't know, but I'm wearing my little mushroom sweater because the red mushrooms on the sleeves match the pants. And that's kind of just a little bit of a comfy wreath making fit tonight. All right, I'm gonna put my water and a snack in the car and hope for the best. <laughs> Yay, reads. All right, so I got the perimeter on now. Next, I'll do the frame the rough opening, then put the studs in, work on my curves, but pretty happy with it. It went pretty easy, and I think I can get a good bit more done tonight, so yeah. Wow, look at that shot. That's just that's just nice. I've seen so many amazing Christmas lights tonight. I'm gonna have to show you more on my way home, but oh my God, look at this house. And the house next to it too. They're slaying. Where would you like the hang? Where, where would you like the top line to be? Here? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can. I think you have like a little soft area. If you cut it off. That's really pretty though. Yeah. You probably don't remember, but I still remember. Really oh yeah. The bar. Wow. A lot of people have pushed to start cars here where you can like just, you know, hang your hand out of the window and be like, hey, get my car heated up. Like there's three cars in this parking lot right now that are just heating. My tires are back here, by the way, if you're wondering what these big plastic bags are. Anyway, so fun. I was able to take my class and I made a beautiful creation of not a wreath, a table arrangement, which I'm gonna show you when I get home on the table. But I, I did get a couple of clips just while I was at the class. I thought that I would have maybe a place to set up my like time lapse of me doing it but it was a pretty small table and there was a lot of people there so I kind of just was like oh never mind <laughs> anyway really nice and I'll talk more about it when I get home look at all these fun lights everybody around here has such cool lights I really can't believe it I wasn't expecting this for some reason just like so much fun Christmas lights I'll film more if I see them. Look at this barn. The star on the silo. Love it. I've never seen a red house. Love it. This is one of my new favorite Christmas songs. Also, look at the wreaths on this house. Santa Claus. She's beautiful on the table. She should be the centerpiece though, but I already have my candlesticks out. But basically, since I didn't show you the process, we started with like a planter pot that looks like this. So you can tell it kind of has that like square part to it. And then there's this like floral tape around it. And in here is a big block of that like floral foam and it was pre-soaked in water. And then there was just like a bunch of different branches to choose from. And basically the lady, Nancy, who was kind of leading it, she, well, when I got there, she was like, are you making a wreath or an arrangement? And I was like, well, I guess I already have two wreaths so I could make an arrangement. Um, I didn't know that we could pick. And, you know, they just had a bunch of clippings from cedar to balsam to pine and all this stuff. And then they had these cute little decorations, like little pine cones and stuff. And I really like the that I, I added in these like fake apple things because it's the exact same shade of burgundy as my candlestick, which is nice. And yeah, it's just like, well, the other ladies who were doing it, they had more, you're supposed to start off like big branches at the bottom and kind of fill it out. So it like fills out your table at the bottom and then you go smaller and smaller and then put like some more tinier pieces around your candlestick. She also was very clear, like if you light this, stay around it and watch it because this, it could go up in flames along with your house. It's more of like, you know, a decor piece. But yeah, we put in some like juniper berries at the end and just like little things for decoration, which were fun. But yeah, some of the other ladies, they had kind of like a tighter design, I guess. And I went for more of like an unruly, not as clipped or refined, I guess. But everybody was really nice about my design. Even when I was saying stuff like that, they were like, no, I like it. It's fun. <laughs> but yeah, everybody was really, really nice 
and it was all pretty much like everybody I was making the arrangements with, they're all generational Vermonters, literally grew up in a small town, have lived there their entire lives. And they were talking to me because I asked them that. I was like, so are all of you from here? You know what I mean? <laughs> As like a break the ice, because I realized when I got there, they all knew each other. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm the odd one out. Normally, if I go to like a community event, it's people of varying ages to a certain degree, which there was like varying ages. Like there was a little boy there who was probably like 12 or something. But other than that, it was like all women of, yeah, kind of varying ages, but definitely like I was one of the younger gals there. I felt like there was kind of like a general repertoire. Like they had kind of a fun little back and forth with each other and I was like, these people are not strangers. <laughs> so then I was like, so are y'all from here? And then <laughs> that kind of broke the ice because then they asked me and I told them I had moved here from Virginia. We talked about like Virginia and Oregon and just like the East Coast, you know, moving from coast to coast and stuff like that. And they were all like, can't relate, you know what I mean? Like literally I've been here my whole life. I think like when you find a place that's really awesome and peaceful, like you just never really want to leave. And I was like, hell yeah. I mean, that's why I'm here is because this place is awesome and peaceful. So yeah, it was just nice. They were just all shooting the shit together and talking about their lives and whatnot. And I was just listening and crafting and vibing. Let's do day 14, big blue. Bone apple tit. All right, it's after midnight now and I just woke up, but I accidentally fell asleep while I was working. <laughs> it's never good. I fell asleep while I was editing and I was also working on something for a brand, which I still have to do before I actually go to sleep because of the time differences, like I need to turn it in. This is too many words to explain. I feel delirious. Anyway, you can support me on Patreon if you so please. And I will just see you guys in the morning. Stay smiling. Hey, y'all.